an average adult has 206 bones and these bones are categorized into different groups based on their shape. They include the long bones, short bones, flat bones, sesamoid bones and irregular bones. Now there are actually slight variations on how bones are classified. However, this video will provide one of the most common ways to classify them. Now, you have to know of this, there is a minor category of bone called sutural bones. They are just small accessory bones and they are sometimes found between cranial sutures. Not everyone has them but it is actually necessary to know of their existence. So let's move over to the first classification of bone which is long bones. The long bones are called the long bones because they are longer than they are wide. So the trick in remembering this is to use the letter L to remember limp. This will help you remember that most of the long bones are found in the arms and in the legs. And also you can use L found in clavicle to remember that clavicle is among the long bones. Clavicle actually has two L's and clavicle is also called collar bones and collar bones has two L's in them. So you have to remember that the arms which are the limbs and the legs which are also the limbs which start with LL are long bones and then the clavicle or the collar bone that has, that has two L's are long bones. So example of long bones include actually the limbs, the humerus of each arm, the radius and ulna of each forearm, the metacarpals of the hands, the femur in each upper leg, the tibia and fibula in each lower leg, the metatarsals in the feet, and the phalanges that make up the fingers and the toes. And again the clavicles, the two clavicles or the two collar bones are examples of long bones. Now for numbers, an average adult has 90 long bones. So as you can notice we have covered the bones of the arms and the legs and also but we have not covered that of the wrist and the ankle and this is going to take us to short bones. Now short bones are named for their cube-like shape as they are approximately the same length and width. So the trick in remembering short bones is to use the letter S to remember sprain. Now since, now, since the ankles and wrists are common joints that are sprained, this will help you remember that the bones of the wrist and the ankles are actually short bones. So examples of short bones include the wrist, you can find the carpal bones which are the sphenoid, lunate, tranquitrum, hermit, capitate, trapezoid and the trapezium. And then for the ankle, we can find the tarsal bones which are the talus, navicular, cuboid, calcaneus and the three navicular. I hope you noticed that when I was listing the carpal bones, I skipped pisiform because pisiform is actually a sesamoid bone, not a small bone. Now let's move over to flat bones. Flat bones are thin and broad and they are typically found where protection of an organ or organs are necessary. So the trick in remembering flat bones is to use the letter F that is in flat bone to remember fault. You know fault serves like a form of protection to protect something and that is exactly what flat bones do. They protect vital organs. Now example of flat bones include the rib cage, the sternum and the ribs, the skull with bones like the frontal, parietal, occipital, nasal, lacrimal and the vermal bone and then the scapula which is located close to the rib cage. Now flat bones are primarily found in the rib cage and part of the cranium protecting organs like the heart, lungs and brains and an average adult has 36 flat bones. Now, Sesamoid bones. Sesamoid bones resemble the sesam seed. Now the trick to remembering sesamoid bone is to use the first part of the word sesam to remember a seed-like shape. Additionally, you can think of them as being P-shaped, which aligns to pisiform and patella. The, they both start with pisiform and patella both start with P. Now sesamoid bones are just small seed-like shaped bones and they develop within tendons. An example of them include pisiform which is found between the flexor carpi ulnaris tendon and then the patella which is found in the quadricep tendon. It serves as attachment for 
the patella tendon. Now, most adults have just four sesamoid bones, two pisiform and two patella. However, some individuals may have additional sesamoid bones near joints of the hand and the feet. Now, let's move over to irregular bones. Irregular bones have odd shapes and they don't fit into other categories. So the trick in remembering irregular bones is just to use the eye in irregular. And these bones are primarily found in the hips, spine, skull, and the ears. So example of irregular bones are in the hips, you can find the hip bone. In the spine is the vertebrae, which include the sacrum and the coccyx in adults. And again is the skull, which is the temporal, ethmoid, sphenoid, zygomatic, maxilla, mandible, inferior nasal concha, and the palatine bones. And for the ears, you have the malus, incus, and steps. An average adult has over 48 irregular bones. Now let's take a little recap. For long bones, you have to remember the L, which is found in the limbs and clavicle. For short bones, you have to remember sprain, because you can sprain your ankle and your wrist. For flat bones, you have to remember fort because it serves as a form of protection. And this is the rib, the skull, and the scapula. Then for sesamoid bones, you have to remember the sesame seed or the P-shape, which stands for the pisiform and the patella. And then for irregular bones, you have to remember the eye that starts the irregular. It is found in hips, spine, and some part of the skull and the ears. Now, I hope this video helped you in understanding the different type of bones. And I wish you good luck in whatever exams you are preparing for. And I also hope you found this helpful enough to like and subscribe. And also comment what your thoughts are in the comment section. Until next time, thanks for watching us always.